Hi everyone, I'm Randy Craighead and welcome back to Foundations. And I trust you've been doing the Foundations book and digging into the Word of God and answering all those questions. And again, you, put, you get out of something what you put into it. So hopefully you're putting in the work and, uh, and you'll be greatly rewarded for it. Today I want to talk about the topic of faith. And I, and I entitled this Discover Faith or Discovering Faith. And faith is a big topic. And, uh, and, we, and as Christians, when we come into Christianity, come into the church world, and coming into the Bible, we really don't understand what faith is. We just know that we, we've activated our faith to receive Christ into our life. But how do we use faith? That's, that's saving faith. But how do we use faith uh, in our lives? So that's why it's a little bit of a discovery for most people, myself included. So uh, I want to talk about faith. Now, there's two basic kinds of faith that we see uh, operating in the world today. We have the natural faith and we have supernatural faith. That's once we get saved, we begin to learn how to operate in that particular faith. But every day we exercise our faith. Whether you realize it or not, uh, you got in your car, you drove that car, and you had faith, hopefully, that it would start up <laughs> and get you to where you're going. You, get fa- you have faith to get on an airplane, and you have faith that that plane's going to get you to where you want to go. You have faith in a chair that you might be sitting in that is going to hold you up. Okay, so there's, there's faith. There's, we operate in faith every day because we believe certain things are going to happen, okay? So we experience these through our five senses. Now, the super, it's, it's their supernatural faith, and that's a God faith, supernatural God faith. And it resides above our natural senses, okay? And that's what we're going to talk about, okay? Because we live in a world that's basically four-dimensional. We have your length, the width, the height, and then we have the time-space continuum, which is kind of the fourth dimension, if you will. And I like to call faith operating and just in kind of a sense of it's like the fifth dimension, okay? It's above length, width, height, the three dimensions, and the fourth dimension of time, space, continuum. It's above that, okay? And so that's kind of how I like to look at it. When I talk a lot more about this in the more expanded lesson, uh, you'll find on YouTube, and, and be sure to go look at that, okay? So I want to talk about three kinds of supernatural faith. There's natural faith, but I want to talk about supernatural faith. All right. So the first kind of faith that we see is, and we've all operated in this, is saving faith. We put our faith and our trust in Christ to be our Savior and Lord. And we ask him to come into our life. And without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. Okay, so we have to have faith. And so our salvation is contingent upon our faith. Not our good deeds or our works, but it's our faith. Believe, have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. So that's saving faith. Okay, and so why do we have to have that? Because Jesus is just not evident to our physical senses. It's not. So we have to have faith in something that we don't see. We can read about it in his word, but we don't see it in our natural senses. So faith is the evidence of not, uh, uh, evidence not seen. The second kind of faith that we see in scripture, so the saving faith, and we see that there's a faith that's part of the fruits of the spirit, the nine fruits of the spirit. And so that's the second kind of faith. And this faith and our faith grows. Uh, gifts are given, but fruit grows. And so we see, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So faith is part of the fruit of the Spirit. And faith as a fruit is a result of our salvation and our union with Christ. Okay, so it's something that we begin to operate in, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, how we relate to one another. We have the nine, we talked about last time, the nine gifts of the Spirit, but there's also nine fruits of the Spirit that grow in our life. And all of us are to grow in those nine fruits of the Spirit. He who abides in me, John 15, and I in him bears much fruit. So it's, it's implying here that we are to, our fruit, fruit is to grow and, and to increase. So there's a growth to our faith. There's growing this. So this fruit, this grows, faith grows in our life. The Bible says, if you have faith, it's the size of a mustard seed. In other words, he's talking about just a little bit of faith, okay? So you can have little faith and a lot of faith. So growing in faith is the basis for all other 
eight fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, so faith is vital uh, to all of that happening in our life. And in, in Matthew 9, 9, 29, it says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Okay, so we, when we pray, we have to pray in faith. And if we pray with a lack of faith, you're probably going to have a, a lack of answered prayers. Okay, so you want to pray in faith. And that's a whole other topic. Okay, the third time of the kind of faith that we see, the supernatural faith, okay, uh, is the gift of faith. It's the gift of faith. It's part of the nine, nine gifts of the Spirit. So, so it's a potential in the believer from the moment of salvation. So we all have this potential to have this gift of faith at certain times in our life. And you can see this played out. And it's typically more active after we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, okay? And we talked about that last time. So this gift is given instantaneous, unlike the fruit. All of a sudden, you might be in a situation. All of a sudden, you have a gift of faith towards something for something to happen. Or you believe, you just, it just, God drops in your spirit and you go, I have the gift of faith for that. This is going to happen. It's given instantaneously. There's a sudden surge in you to believe with no doubt. Okay? So doubt is the enemy of faith, all right? So all of a sudden you have this surge in you that, hey, I believe this is going to happen. And you're, you know, there's no doubting. And God just gives that to you. And we see this happen in the Bible. Elijah said it wouldn't rain for, for three years, and it didn't, okay? We see Daniel was in the lines, and he trusted God. Peter raised Tabitha from the dead. He said, Tabitha, get up. All of a sudden, whew, he had to give the faith that this was going to happen. And Peter bless his heart, he was just sleeping soundly before he was supposed to be executed in the next day because he had faith that God was going to deliver him. All, you just have this, it's a supernatural instantaneous faith. So why do we need faith? Number one, we said earlier, to be saved, to eternal life. You have to have, this is your saving faith. Number two, to please God. You can't please God, the Bible says. It's impossible without faith. It's impossible to please him to please God. So he expects us as believers to operate in faith towards him, just like a child would operate in faith toward their parents to do good and so forth, to be there for them, okay? And so, that, so God expects us to operate and relate to him by faith. Another reason why we need faith is to live by. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So we are to live by faith. And I love this, this scripture right here in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, we don't walk by our circumstances in life, even though circumstances affect us, but we are to walk by faith so we can walk around those circumstances or walk through those circumstances. And I love the play on words here. The word walk here in the Greek means peripateo, okay? And it means to walk around. I love that, all right? It says, for we are to walk around by faith and not by sight. And obviously, we have our natural sight. But when things come our way, God gives us ability when we're operating faith to see, see the situation, the circumstance, whatever it is, from his perspective and not just our perspective, okay? And that's trusting in the, that's the faith in God, in Christ, that you're gonna see, see things through his perspective. That's why it's so important, whatever you're going through something, get into the word and find the promises related to whatever you're going through because that way you get his perspective and not just your perspective. So, walk with peripatia, we walk around. So not by sight or by our circumstances. We don't walk around uh, and, and have an, based on our circumstances. We don't, we don't pick up an attitude based on our circumstances. Although we're, we're natural human beings and, and we're vulnerable, things are going to hit us at times and they're going to affect us. And, it, and initially you can get to shock about something or whatever it is, it's bad report, and it is going to affect you. But Back up a little bit, get God's perspective, get into his word, and begin to see it from his perspective. And that's exercising faith, in faith in him. So it's not by sight or by what our circumstances dictate. That's how we walk, okay? And I love this word. In the Latin, circum means around, and substantia means stance. So we are, in other words, 
uh, we are to encircle that and stand upon it. Whatever that, whatever that situation is, we are to stand, walk around, and or stand upon that circumstance above it from God's perspective. It's under our feet, if you will. And we are putting that situation under our spiritual feet and standing upon it with the promises in his word. That's a whole message right there. But anyway, just to give you a little bit. Another reason why we need to uh, operate in faith is for answered prayer. Answered prayer. It just plays into what I was just talking about. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. That's important. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. That's so powerful. To re- and another reason, another reason we walk by faith and we live by faith is to receive the promises of God. So for answer prayer and to receive the promises of God. Hebrews 6 says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience, though we all hate that word, right? <laughs> we hate to be patient. We're typically impatient human beings. But through faith and patience, that's how we inherit the, inherit the promises of God. And then the last one we see here is to resist the enemy. And who's our enemy? The devil, okay? And so, we, so above all, it says in Ephesians 6, taking the shield of what? Faith, the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So there's an enemy of our soul that's coming against us. And so the way that we thwart him off to resist him is we pick up the shield of faith. And what is that? We get into the word. The word is the shield. The biblical definition uh, of faith, the classical definition, uh, again, I unpacked this a lot in the, in the lesson online, but the class, classical text proof for faith is Hebrews 11.1. 1, and it says this, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That is a mouthful. And we can spend hours unpacking it. But here's, the, here's just, just the overview, okay, the cliff notes. Faith is now. It's something that you have now. God puts it in you now. Hope, on the other hand, is something you're just hoping for. It's in the future. It may or may not work out. But with faith, God drops it in your spirit, okay? So faith is a substance. It's real. It's tangible, okay? Faith is a tangible thing. It's the substance of things that you're hoping for. In other words, you're gripped with it. You're going to get it now. Now. And it's the evidence of things not seen. Okay? These are tangible things. This is, this is, this is proof and it's substantial evidence. Now, I'm going to break this down uh, in another way. And I love in the, in the centenary translation from 1924, it says this. Now, faith is now, faith is now, the title deed of things hoped for. The putting to the proof of things, the evidence, it's this proof of things not seen. In other words, it's a title deed. It's the evidence of things not seen, okay? It's the proof, it's substantial. Just like when you have your car or your or your mortgage on your house, or the title. When you have a title of something, it means that you own it, okay? If someone was camping out in my front yard when I drove home today, and I'm going like, hey, what's up? They go like, well, this is, we just want to camp here. This is our new place. We're like, no, you can't camp there. You're trespassing. No, I'm not trespassing. This is my property. No, can you show me the title deed? Well, I don't have one. Well, I have one. So you can't, you can't park there. You can't skip out there, okay? In other words, you have the title deed is something that it's yours. You own it. And that's what faith does. When you really grip it and God gives it to you in a certain way, you, go, you own it and you know it's going to happen. So it's a title deed to something, okay, of things hoped for. And the putting to the proof of things not seen, okay? So... And so it, God drops it in your spirit. I remember a testimony years ago that I read about Dr. Cho, Yangi Cho, who pastored the world's largest church in Seoul, Korea for many years. He's now in heaven. And, uh, and so in the early days after the Korean War in the 50s, in the late 50s, I mean, the country was just devastating. 
It's amazing what God's done with Korea over the last 60 years or so. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, and so he was a new believer, and there were some missionaries working with him. And, uh, and he, he wanted a, a bicycle. He wanted an American Schwinn bicycle because he, wanted, because he didn't have a car. He wanted to get around. You know, and so he goes, and so I was just praying for a bicycle. And I, I remember when God just dropped it in my spirit that I was going to get a, a bicycle. And he'd walk around going, I'm pregnant with bicycle. I'm pregnant with bicycle. And I love that. And that's when God drops it in your heart. He drops it not just in your heart, in your spirit. And you know you have it. And so anyway, so there's a lot we can unpack. But that's just a quick overview. And, uh, and you'll learn a lot more when you go online. So that's, that's it for today on faith. And I hope that helps and at least it whets your appetite to, to dive in and discover what faith is for you. All right, God bless and we'll see you next time.